Londoners, to travellers, this is a familiar sight. The Houses of Parliament, where the affairs of the nation are deliberated and decided. Matters of state, new acts of Parliament, matters affecting the lives of millions. But what are the smaller matters, the local affairs in all the hundreds and thousands of towns and villages in Britain? Come up river a few miles from London to the place where I live. There's been a bridge over the river here for nearly 700 years. And near the bridge, a town gradually grew up. Today, it is home for some 30,000 people. decides whether we are to have a new park or playing fields? Who runs our new schools? Who arranges the swimming pool repairs, the lighting of the streets, the care of the library? Not the government in London, but our own town council. Every year we elect from among the ordinary citizens of the town the members of the council. Councillors choose from among themselves or distinguished citizens of the borough a number of elders or aldermen, and a mayor who serves for one year unless re-elected. The mayor is chairman of the council and the representative of the borough. He is, in fact, first citizen of the town. All this work is done entirely voluntarily by citizens who wish to serve their community. I have served on the town council myself for several years, and for this year, I am the mayor. In the olden days, the mace, as it was called, was a staff carried as a weapon to protect the person of the mayor. Today, it remains, together with the chain of office, as an emblem of the position of first citizen. But my job is not just a question of wearing robes and a chain of office. It entails a great deal of very hard, unpaid work. As well as presiding impartially at council meetings and being a member of several of the committees responsible for maintaining the town's social services, my time is also taken up by social functions at which I am asked to appear as both representative of the town and of the Queen. All my weeks are busy ones and this is no exception, but tonight for once I'm free. I find that the affairs of the town council are on my mind all the time. For instance, these temporary traffic lights at Hill Street are due to be made permanent. I wonder if we've had final clearance from the Ministry of Transport yet. This is Standall Road, where a demolition scheme is almost ready to begin. I must ask the housing committee if they have moved the tenants yet. The collection of refuse is the responsibility of the surveyors department. We must increase the staff. That's Mr. Bayford working late. He's from our public health department. 
His job is to ensure that the milk and food supplies sold are all up to prescribed standards. As a result, my wife knows that she can trust the quality of the food she buys because of the constant supervision that goes on behind the scenes by council employees. During my term of office as chief citizen, I have less time than usual to spend at home, because not only is there all the work with the council, but my wife, as mayoress, and I have to officiate at all sorts of functions. Opening our annual river carnival, starting the swimming gala, distributing presents at the local children's hospital. Today, I'm giving out prizes to student nurses. occasions can only be allowed to interrupt the general flow of a hospital routine once in a while. They have their work to get on with, and so have I. By profession, I'm a senior electrical engineer at the local electricity board, and as work on the council by councillors and aldermen is entirely voluntary and unpaid, we still have to earn our own livings. There's a wide variety of interests represented on the council. Businessmen, architects, lawyers, housewives, shopkeepers, people from all walks of life. There's Councillor Wayne, who runs an old family tailoring business. Alderman Carter is a businessman. While Mrs. Westland is a widow who lives a retired life with her son. All sorts and kinds of people elected from amongst the citizens of our town. Once a month, we hold our regular council meetings at the town hall. And all councillors and aldermen are expected to attend, and attend punctually, for there's always a great deal of business to get through. Throughout the past few weeks, Various groups of us on the council have met in committee to discuss the town's affairs. And now, the council meet together in public so that the various committee's recommendations can be discussed and ratified. With me sits the town clerk, in a purely advisory capacity, and beside us the aldermen, elders of the council. Below us sit the councillors, ready for the debates, together with the borough surveyor, the borough treasurer, the medical officer of health, the borough librarian and other officials, and the members of the public who care to attend. Each council meeting is reported in the local papers. Not the entire proceedings, of course, they're often very lengthy, but matters that the newspapers feel are of interest to their readers. At this particular meeting, there was the question of applying for a government grant to improve the council property on Denmark Street. This was something that Councillor James had been pressing for for a long time. When I called for a vote, Alderman Carter had to abstain from the voting because it was a building project with which he was concerned, and council members are not permitted to vote on matters with which they are connected in their private business.
Then came a chance that Councillor Wayne had been waiting for. He moved that once again the necessary ministry in London be approached to give permission for traffic signals at the junction of High Street and King Street. Why, only this evening he had been held up for five minutes by a continuous flow of traffic whilst on his way to the meeting. And so the meeting went on, with one matter after another being discussed. It was reported that of 100 samples of milk taken for examination, 97 were placed in grade one. A report from the borough librarian was received. Membership had increased by over 500 in the past year. It was reported that a certain amount of damage had been caused to the trees in Mill Park by school children. It was decided that no action be taken by the council, but that the headmaster of the school or the children concerned should be asked to deal with the matter himself. It was resolved that in view of the relative shallowness of the water at the swimming pool, plans for a higher springboard should not be approved. It was reported that new concrete street lamps are being installed in Parsons Lane. It was hoped that these would be a considerable improvement. It was decided to approve the request to have the property at 10 Market Street demolished. It was resolved to buy more land as soon as possible in order to prevent delay in the current year's program on the new Meadow Lane Council Housing Estate. It was resolved to accept the revised tender for materials in the construction of the new town hall. And in this, my year of office as mayor of our town, the privilege falls to me to be the one who lays the foundation stone for our new town hall and civic centre. Which will, we hope, in the years to come, serve well the town and the interests of future town councils. Councils which, under the leadership of their mayors, have one interest, to serve diligently the citizens of their town.